further continue with topic number one, the section on exponents. This is now part two of exponents. Prior to the commencement of this lesson, I would advise you to please make sure that you understand the first two rules. That is the index rule for multiplication and the index rule for division prior to commencement of this section. Once you have mastered the first two, the rest becomes an easy topic. We are now going to go over the next part, which is the index law for powers. As the name suggests, you need to consider powers. The rule that governs this goes on to say, when a power of a number is raised to a power, the indices are multiplied as follows. Simply saying, if we have a raised to the exponent m, all raised to the exponent n, we simply go ahead and multiply the two indices, which means I multiply the m and the n, which basically gives me the answer of a to the m times n. What you need to do is to be very, very careful that you do not go and add these two powers or these two indices. The rule once again, if you have a power raised to a power or an index raised to an index, you simply multiply the two indices. To show this much, much better, we will look at an example. Worked example number one, simplify the following. In a question like this, we have x squared all raised to the power 3 or all raised to the exponent 3. In order to do this, we simply look at the rule that we need to apply. And the rule once again states that if I have a power raised to a power, I multiply the two indices. In this case, the first power is 2, the second power is 3, which means all I simply do is I multiply the 2 and the 3, thereby giving me the answer x to the exponent 2 times 3 and 2 times 3 is equal to 6. So this simplifies to x to the exponent 6. Now that is quite easy. What you need to be able to do is to understand this with more complicated examples. But the application will be exactly the same. Look at example number 2. Example number 2 simply uses the same rule but goes a bit further to incorporate another rule which we will see later on. In question number two, I have the, a fractional component. The numerator is what I will simplify first. If you look at the numerator, the numerator, I will have to use the index law for powers, which simply means I have to start by multiplying that with that, which means this becomes x to the exponent 3 times 2 over the denominator. I do not bring the denominator as part of my calculations as yet because I simply want to do the numerator. If I go further to simplify the numerator, x to the exponent 3 times 2 is basically the same as x to the exponent 6 divided by x to the exponent 4. If I look at this part of the question, obviously this is not the answer. If I carefully look at this, I will notice that I have similar bases being divided, which means I will now use the index law for division. And the index law for division tells me that I need to subtract the indices. So all I have here is x to the exponent 6 minus 4, which is equal to x squared. Now this is, again, an application of the rule for powers. Going further, I now want to look at the index law for powers of products. Now, most lecturers will not do this with you because they would want you to understand the previous law and apply the previous law for a question dealing with the powers of products. But what we will have to do is we will have to look at what am I actually talking about here? When a product is raised to a power, every factor of the product is raised to the power. And this is shown as follows. If I have a to the exponent m multiplied by b to the exponent n, all raised to the exponent p, 
Now this would have been a simple example had I not had the b to the n because I would simply multiply the m and the p. Because I've incorporated this b raised to the exponent n, I have to see how the rule is applied to this portion over here. What simply happens here is, this is equal to, I break them up. I will first look at the a to the exponent m, this portion. I will ignore this. So the answer here will read a to the exponent m times p. Then I will look at the second part. I will ignore the first part, b to the exponent n times p. And this is something very, very simple because it is the stem off from the previous rule. Showing this in terms, <coughs> excuse me, showing this in terms of a worked example will illustrate this rule very, very clearly. Simplify the following. Question number one. I have x multiplied by y cubed all squared. What I need to understand over here is this x has no power on the top here or no exponent on the top. Whenever it is blank like this, we know that the exponent is actually 1. So this exponent should actually be an exponent of 1. To simplify this, I ignore this portion. And I say the answer is x to the exponent 1 multiplied by 2. Multiplied by, I ignore this portion, y to the exponent 3 times 2. And that's exactly what I have here. It's 1 multiplied by 2 y to the exponent 3 multiplied by 2. And to simplify this off, I multiply the indices and this becomes x squared multiplied by y to the exponent of y to the power of y to the index 6. Let's go further. In example number 2, I took it a little bit further. I incorporated multiple rules. But once again, start slowly, do not rush the steps, and you should have no hassles answering a question like this. If I look at number 2, I need firstly to simplify the numerator. If I'm going to simplify the numerator, I will simply go ahead and say this is x squared raised to the exponent 3. This is y cubed raised to the exponent 3. So in actual fact, I'm simply multiplying the indices. That's 2 times 3 and this becomes 3 times 3, which gives me the answer of x to the exponent 6, y to the exponent 3 times 3, which is 9, divided by the denominator, which I haven't even touched as yet. My next step would be to go ahead and find out what rule do I use in order to simplify this. Again, I will see that this is division. If it is division, obviously I'm going to be using the index law for division, which means I need to subtract the indices. If I go with the x's, it's x to the exponent 6 minus 2. If I go with the y's, it's y to the exponent 9 minus 3. And this is equal to x to the exponent 4, y to the exponent 9 minus 3, which is equal to 6. Now, as of yet, this is still not an examination type question. This is far too easy. As we progress, we will see that we'll be slowly coming up to an example that could be tested in the examinations. Let's go a bit further. Now we're going to come across the index law for powers of quotients. Immediately the word quotient. A quotient is the answer to a division problem which means I am now dealing with powers or exponents being divided. When a quotient is raised to a power, both the numerator and the denominator are raised to the power as follows. If I have a to the exponent m divided by b to the exponent n, all raised to the exponent p, this will remind you of the previous rule, where I had multiplication, except now I have division. All I do in this case is I multiply the m times the p and I multiply the n times the p. 
and the answer here is a to the exponent m times p divided by b to the exponent n times p. Now this is something quite easy. I'm sure that if you look at this rule, you'll be able to apply the rule the moment that you see division raised by an exponent. Let's look at an example. A very, very simple example will be x squared divided by y cubed, all cubed. If we are asked to simplify this expression, all we will do is we will look at the indices. As I mentioned previously, the law tells me that I have to multiply the indices. In this case, I'm going to multiply out. It becomes x to the exponent 2 times 3, y to the exponent 3 times 3. And this simply becomes x to the exponent 6 divided by y to the exponent 9. Once again, I simply went ahead and used this rule. And by the way, I'm not expecting you to memorize this rule. If you go ahead and use this rule a few times, it becomes something that will come naturally to you. Question number two. In question number two, I see in the numerator, I have variables that are multiplied and I have a single variable in my denominator all raised to the exponent 4. Once again, do not let the length of this question confuse you. All you have to do is simply apply the above mentioned rule. And in a case like this, your answer will read x to the exponent, yes, all you do is multiply the powers. Multiply that power. Multiply the, those indices. So I end up with x to the exponent 2 multiplied by 4, y to the exponent 2 multiplied by 4, z to the exponent 3 multiplied by 4. So this 4 is going to be multiplied by each and every indice that you see within the brackets. And obviously with this your answer becomes x to the exponent 8, y to the exponent 8, divided by z to the exponent 12. And that is the final answer. We cannot simplify any further than that. I hope you are understanding this. We will go to an activity. Activity number one. And as previously mentioned, the rules governing the activities, you will first try them out and then look at the answers to see where you have made possible errors. Activity number one, the question reads, simplify the following and if you have to simplify question number one two for this activity we are only going to be dealing with five examples you can take a moment to copy the examples down once again Press pause if you require additional time. Okay, let's look at the answers. Activity number one, answers. Question one, in question one, we noticed that we had x squared, y cubed, z, all cubed, which means this z, the power here, is actually a power which is 1. If I'm dealing with a question like this, I'm simply going to go ahead and multiply the indices. So it's going to read as 2 times 3, 3 times 3, and 1 times 3. And do it step by step, guys. It's going to be x to the 2 times 3, which is 6, y to the 3 times 3, which is 9, z to the 1 times 3, which is 3. Perfect. Let's go now to example number 2. Example number 2 incorporates multiple rules again. Once again, do not try to do too many steps at one go. You are bound to confuse yourself and get the answer wrong. So I would recommend that you do this portion first. If I deal with the first portion, I will see the answer as being x to the exponent 2 times 3, which is 6, y to the exponent 2 times 3, which is 6. I ultimately got this portion here. Multiplied by x cubed y, to the exponent 1. From here, I can see that I'm dealing with the product rule. 
according to my product rule I need to group the X's together I need to group the Y's together and the answer here becomes X to the exponent not 6 times 3 but it's going to be 6 plus 3 why because the rule that governs multiplication tells me that I need to add the indices so your answer is 6 plus 3 which is 9 y to the exponent 6 plus 1 which is 7 question number 3 question number 3 again deals with multiple rules this here is y to the exponent 1 you don't need to keep putting it in every time that you see it but please understand that it is y to the exponent 1 simplifying the numerator your answer should be x to the exponent 2 times 3 which is 6 y cubed over x to the exponent 1 y to the exponent 1 and once again use the rule for division your final answer x to the exponent 5 y squared two more to go question number four is something that could be asked in the examinations if you look at question number four there are multiple steps in this type of question once again guys please ensure that you do a single rule at a time if I look at the first portion here that's what I can solve first if I look at this portion I can get the answer there so obviously I'm going to be working with the numerator first I end up with x 2 times 2 which is 4 y to the 2 times 2 which is y to the exponent 4 this becomes x cubed y cubed divided by the denominator which I haven't done anything with as yet simplifying the num numerator further x to the 4 plus 3 is 7 y to the 4 plus 3 which is 7 and ultimately when you come to a stage like this you can see that the numerator is exactly the same as the denominator so that cancels off with that which means my answer is 1 now some of you might be thinking of a rule that you learned in school you are correct in doing so but as of yet we have not come to that rule so we are simply going to cancel off I'll give you a moment to look into this example ensure that you understand it we are now going to the last example which is example number five example number five once again let's start by simplifying each part of this expression this portion can be simplified this portion must be simplified on its own simplify that portion and simplify that portion which means I have to go ahead and simplify each part of this expression 3 times 2 is 6 3 times 2 is 6 x to the 2 times 3 which is x to the 6 y to the 1 times 3 which is y cubed likewise my denominator is x squared y squared x to the 2 times 3 which is 6 y to the 2 times 3 which is 6 at this stage ensure that you go ahead and multiply this portion off first then multiply that portion x to the 6 plus 6 is 12 y to the 6 plus 3 is 9 and once again I'm going to stress please do not confuse your rules if this is multiplication I'm going to add the indices and that is why it is 6 plus 6 and not 6 times 6 at this stage you simply work downwards the rule for division x to the exponent 12 minus 8 y to the exponent 9 minus 8 and you end up with x to the 4 multiplied by y again a moment to ponder over this example wonderful goal now comes the next rule again ensure that you understand each one of the previous rules before going over to the next rule this rule is quite an easy rule it is called the zero index before we go on to the zero index I want you to consider the following let's say if I have a question which reads 3 squared divided by 
3 squared. 3 squared is 9. 3 squared is 9. 9 divided by 9 is equal to 1. Very good. Consider the same question again. If I have 3 squared over 3 squared, using my index rule for division, this I will read as 3 to the exponent 2 minus 2. And 2 minus 2 is equal to 0. So the same question can give me an answer of 3 to the exponent 0. What does that mean? From equation 1 and equation 2, I can simply say that 3 to the exponent 0 is equal to 1. And that is the rule that I'm using. Anything raised to the exponent 0 is always equal to 1. a to the exponent 0 is equal to 1. If, for instance, I have, let's go back, if I have a question like this. Let's take a simple question like x squared raised to the exponent 0. Without even thinking, the answer is equal to 1. Let's say if I have x squared y cubed z to the power 4 to the exponent 4 all raised to the exponent 0. Do not even go any further. The answer must equal to 1. So anything raised to the exponent 0, the answer is 1. Now let's try to look at this rule and how we can apply it. We're going to apply the rule very soon, but first let's look at the, the concept of negative exponents. Now this is something vital. When we deal with exponents, all final answers must be with positive exponent. In your examination, the instruction will read, convert your final answer to positive exponent or all final answers must be in terms of positive exponents. Sometimes they will speak of third form. That will be something quite simple. Go back to the section on, on thirds. Now how do I convert a negative exponent into a positive exponent? The rule is very simple. Consider this expression. A raised to the exponent minus m. This negative tells me that I have a negative exponent. To convert a negative exponent to a positive exponent, all I simply do is, and remember this here is over 1. All I simply do is, I invert the fraction and I change the sign of the exponent. In simpler words, if I have the negative exponent on the top, I take it to the bottom and I change the sign. And that is the rule I'm going to apply. There's the negative exponent on the top. I took it to the bottom and I changed the sign. Consider this. If I have the negative exponent on the bottom, I take it to the top and I change the sign because this here is over 1. So I take it to the top and I change the sign. That is the simple rule we are going to be using. Now simplify the following. x to the exponent minus 3. Now guys, remember this here is over 1. What do I do? The negative exponent is on the top. I take it to the bottom and I change the sign. That's it. Look at example number 2. There's the negative exponent at the bottom. Your answer will simply be, if it's at the bottom negative, take it to the top and change the sign. I'm going to show you how we can use this in further examples and you will see what I'm speaking of. Example number three, this again guys is a typical examination type question. A question like this should come out for approximately 4%. Let's go ahead and try to simplify this thing out. Again, I'll use my previous rules. Multiply or simplify by using the appropriate rule. This is using the power of products, power of products, power of products. 
to simplify the first portion 2 times 3 3 times 2 it's x to the 4 y to the 6 this portion here yeah? let me just illustrate this a bit better for you All right, watch as I highlight what we are seeing now is if I have here this portion remember this is a 1 this gives me x to the 9 y to the 3 very good this portion here if I simplify this it becomes 3 times 4 3 times 4 which gives me this portion here x to the 4 y to the 4 there's nothing I can deal with over there now once I've got that I can go ahead now and simplify again by using the appropriate rule again multiplication add the indices 4 and 9 6 and 3 work with the denominator 12 and 4 12 and 4 you end up with x to the 13 y to the 9 divided by x to the 16 y to the exponent 16 use your division rule as you come down here division rule as you come down here now be very very careful with this guys this is equal to x to the exponent I'm going to write this down for you. Look at the powers. The powers is 13 minus 16. And 13 minus 16 is not equal to 3. It is equal to negative 3. And this is where this negative 3 comes from. Likewise, y to the exponent 9 minus 16 is equal to minus 7. If I have a problem like this, where are the negative exponents? Are they at the top or are they at the bottom? They are at the top. In order to simplify, whatever is at the top that is negative, I bring it to the bottom and I make it positive. And this is where I end up with the final answer as being that. While I'm at this, guys, another point that I just want to illustrate, it might come across in a certain example as I go further on, but let me just show it to you here. If I have x to the, let's say, 4 over x to the minus 3, and I want to simplify this. The rule tells me it becomes x to the exponent, I subtract the indices. But when I subtract the indices, my first one is 4, the second one is minus 3, I must ensure that I subtract them. Guys, can you see what I'm talking about here? So the answer here is x to the exponent 4 plus 3, which is equal to 7. Now please ensure that you understand this portion, especially when the denominator has a negative power. Some of you might be clever and say, but wait a second, if it's at the bottom, take it to the top, it becomes 4 plus 3. That's fine. Let's go now to the next example. Example number 4. In this example, all right, example number 4. In this example, we go on to say, simplify the numerator. Again, guys, I'm not going to spend too much time with the simple rule you can do that. Look at this portion. That becomes easy. What about this one? Raised to the exponent 0. If it's raised to the exponent 0, the answer is 1. Even though this is a negative exponent, I do not expect you now to go ahead and try to convert the negative to a positive immediately. Remember the rule. The final answer needs to be with positive exponent which means you can work with the negative but at the final stage convert the negative into a positive nonetheless the answer here becomes x to the 2 times 2 y to the 2 this becomes 1 I won't reflect it in my next step here it's x to the exponent 3 multiplied by minus 2 which is minus 6 y to the exponent 4 times minus 2 which is negative 8 over x to the exponent 1, y to the exponent minus 7. Simplify the numerator. If I'm going to simplify the numerator, for those of you struggling to see what's going on, it's simply this. If I have to rewrite it, it's x to the 4, x to the minus 6, y squared, y to the minus 8. Now look at this, guys. Do this portion first and then do that portion. Remember, I am adding. So it becomes 4 plus minus 6, 2 plus minus 8. And the answer is x to the 
minus 2. y to the exponent 2 minus 8 is minus 6 over the denominator. Simplifying further, guys, if I go down, it's x to the exponent minus 2 minus the power at the bottom, which is 1. And that's where I get that from. y to the exponent, watch this, guys. It's minus 6 minus whatever is at the bottom. And what is at the bottom? It's minus 7. And minus 6 minus minus 7 is the same as minus 6 plus 7, which is y to the exponent 1. And that is your final answer for question number 4. Again, a moment to look at this example. Ensure that you understand the rules. There's nothing new here. I'm still using the same rules that I've explained previously. And yes, for those of you who are saying, but this is not complete, you are 100% correct. Why is this one not complete? Look at this. The negative exponent is being reflected in the answer. I need to get rid of it. And how do I get rid of it? Remember, this is all over 1. The negative is at the top. I take it to the bottom and I make it positive. Very good. And this should earn you full marks. Let's go, now, let's go over to question number 5. Question number 5 may seem tricky because of that root sign. But you will have to use your knowledge on thirds to be able to solve a question like this. Remember, before I even go further, the number that is not shown over here is a 2. Before I even consider the square root, I'm going to simplify whatever I see in the bracket first. And what do I notice? I have a 32 divided by 2. I have an x to the 5 divided by x. I have a y cubed divided by y. So forget about this root sign. Simply look at the rules coming down. And this is equal to the square root of 32 divided by 2 is 16. x to the 5 divided by x to the 1 is x to the 4. And this gives me y squared. Now comes the rule where I will simply remove that square root. Now, how do I go about removing that square root? Very, very simple. An important rule that I want you to remember is the square root of, let's say, x is the same as x to the exponent half. The cube root of x is same as x to the exponent 1 over 3. The fourth root of x is the same as x to the exponent 1 over 4. So in this case, the square root of 16x to the 4y squared is exactly the same as 16, which I can write as 4 squared, x to the 4y squared, all raised to the exponent half. So ultimately, I am telling you, I don't work with square roots. I remove the square root and I convert it into an exponent. And in this case, the exponent is a half. And now the rule becomes easy. I simply go ahead and multiply the indices. So I read the first answer as 4 to the exponent, 2 times half. The next one, x to the exponent, 4 times half. And the last one, 2 to the exponent, 2, sorry, y to the exponent, 2 times a half. And guys, don't make a mistake with this. If you cannot get the answers, you are allowed to use your calculator. 2 times half is 1, so that becomes 4. 4 times half is 2, so that becomes x squared. 2 times half, which is 1, so this becomes y to the exponent, 1. And this is your final answer. So questions of this nature could possibly come out. But once again, guys, I want you to ensure that you remember these rules. Now we come across 
the summative activity. This activity will incorporate all the rules that you've come across. If you are able to understand the questions here, you should have no problems in your examination. Once again, guys, the question simplify the following. There's quite a few. I would ask you to please copy them down. Once again, you can pause the screen, copy the questions down. And remember guys the rule, only go into the answer section once you have completed working each and every one out. But you can pause, I'm going further. I think there are 16 examples, yes. Again, you can press pause. Once you are happy with it, you go ahead and answer the questions. Okay. For the answer section, we are going to go a bit faster with this. Question number one. Again, the rule that you're going to apply here will be the division and then the multiplication rule. So, dividing, you have a squared multiplied by a to the exponent 7. If I go across, I add the 2 plus 7, which is equal to 9. Correct. Let's get our pen back. Right, let's go on to number 2. In number 2, again, it is quite easy. But in number 2, please ensure you go across. It's 3 times 2. Then I will do the A's. And lastly, I will do the, the B's. So in this case, 3 times 2 is 6. A to the 6. B to the 2 plus 4, which is 6. Correct. Example number 3. Example number 3 is a bit different from the others because I have a negative exponent here. But nonetheless, let's go ahead with it. 12. There's no other constants anywhere else. Once I finished off with the constants, I look at the x's. There's x, there's x, there's an x. So it becomes 4 minus 7 plus 3. And your y becomes 1 minus 1, which is equal to 0. And that's what I have. 12x to the 4 minus 7 plus 3 is 0 y to the 1 minus 1 is equal to 0 and obviously guys I know that is 1 that is 1 12 times 1 is equal to 12 you should get that one correct let's go further example number 4 example number 4 remember guys we work with the denominator first if I work with the denominator first it becomes 2 cubed which is 8 a to the 2 times 3 b to the 2 times 3 and now I go down. 16 divided by 8 is 2. That's a to the 0. That's b to the 0. Obviously, which is equal to 1. So your final answer is 2. Example number 5 is a very, very good example. Remember, guys, there's multiple ways to do this. Some of you might want to get rid of the negative exponent immediately. Some might want to simplify what is in the brackets first. Whichever way, be careful, you'll end up with the correct answer. What I have done is I've got rid of the negative exponent first. If I get rid of this negative exponent, I make it positive, but I swap the fraction around. Remember, everything is about balance. And now I go further. 16 divided by 2, that divided by that, y to the 4 divided by y squared. And I end up with 8x squared, y squared, all squared. And the last step, guys, multiply out. So your answer is 64, x to the 4, y to the 4. If you are making any errors, please ensure that you understand where you made that error. Number 6. Number 6, no problems with number 6. I might do that portion first. It's a to the 
for two tensor, which is eight. B to the four, denominator. And now I work down. Final answer. A to the six, multiplied by B. You notice, guys, that I'm going a bit fast with this because there's so many examples. Right, but if you are having a hassle, please ask the lecturer in front of you, and they will further uh, emphasize the correct answer for this question. Question number seven. In question number seven, multiple steps. Let's not get confused, guys. One at a time. So what I'm saying here is, if you're dealing with this question, ensure that you do portion by portion. Start with this one. Get the answer. All right. You can also get the answer for this one. Remember this three is not in the bracket. So this is the portion that you must look at. So if I'm dealing with this, that's three squared, which is nine, x to the four, y to the four. I leave that as so, I simplify that. I work with the numerator. Guys, always simplify the numerator first here. That's your answer, 27, x to the eight, y squared, over this, three x to the four, y to the four, and now I do the division. Once you perform the division, that is what you are left with. But now comes the problem. Once I come to this step, you cannot leave the answer as so. The main reason is there is a negative exponent here. But again, remember this is all over one. To convert the negative exponent to a positive exponent, I take it to the bottom. So the y to the minus two becomes y squared as the denominator. Guys, how's it going? Question number eight. Question number eight, fairly easy. Let's consider the x's. Prior to that, I will do the constants. The constant here is a one, the constant here is a one. And then when I finish up with that, I will consider the y's. So the answer here is four to the exponent, two plus one, minus one, y to the exponent one, plus three, plus one. And you answer 4x squared y to the 5. Very good. Example number 9, I think was misplaced because it is a very, very easy example. Go down and get the answer. Perfect. Mark your work, guys. Example number 10, as I explained to you before, example number 10, typical examination type question. I've done examples like this, so you shouldn't have a hassle. Do that portion. To that portion, to that portion, and then apply the multiplication rule for the numerator, multiplication rule for the denominator. And once you do this, you'll find that you're dealing with the division rule. And the division rule gives you the answer a to the 8, b to the 11. That's fine. Number 11. Question number 11. Again, not a hassle, except of this negative 3. But you will still multiply out. Guys, ensure that you have this. I'm not going to explain too much, but I want you to ensure that that gives you that answer. That this portion here gives you this answer. That this portion here gives you that answer. And obviously, this here is equal to 1. I will not incorporate it into my second step. Multiply the numerator out and then use your rule for division. Now I'm going to take a bit longer here. There's a 1 there. 9 divided by 1 is 9. Look at my x's. This becomes x to the exponent what? Minus 2 minus minus 4. What happens on the y's guys? y to the exponent 3 minus 6. It's always that minus that. Most of the guys forget about this. So your answer here is 9 minus 2 plus 4 is 2 and 3 minus 6 is minus 3. But I do not leave the answer as so because of that negative. It's on the top. I take it to the bottom and that becomes the final answer. Right, let's go further. Number 12. 
Number 12 shouldn't pose a problem to you. 81 can be written as 3 to the exponent 4, x to the 16. This is the fourth root. To convert this into an exponent, it says it becomes raised to the exponent 1 over 4. And I simply multiply out. It's 3 to the exponent 4 times a quarter, 16 or x to the exponent 16 times a quarter, and your final answer, 3x to the exponent 4. Number 13. Number 13, simplify this first, guys. 27, remember, is 3 cubed. 3 cubed, x to the 6. I leave that as so. This portion here, the 3 is in the bracket. So I'll read it as 3 squared, x squared. That's where I get the answer from. Simplify this portion. That's 3, or even before I go that. You'll notice that cancels off with that, to cut a long story short. So your answer is, multiply out, 3x squared. Guys, I hope it's coming along well. Again, if you are having a hassle, please go to the earlier sections, or the earlier parts, and revise. And go over it again, and again, and again. In order to use, or to simplify example number 14, the bases are the same. Being multiplied, I need to add the indices. Now, adding the indices tells me it's 2y plus z plus 3y minus 2z divided by that. This portion here, let me simplify it first. It becomes x to the exponent 2 plus 3 is 5. z minus 2z is minus z over this. This is division. What do I do with division? Division, I subtract the indices. So if I subtract the indices, it's 5y minus z minus 2y minus 2z. Now, some of you might not be seeing it. What I'm saying is it's x to the exponent. Remember, it's the first portion. 5y minus z minus whatever I see at the bottom, which is 2y plus 2z. And if I multiply this negative out here, that's where I'm getting the minus 2y and the minus 2z from. Sometimes something here might be negative, it converts itself to positive because the negative is being multiplied into the bracket. Now be careful of that. And that is your final answer. Two more to go. Number 15. Okay, number 15 is not difficult at all. Multiply out. Do this portion, that portion, then the denominator. And once you have that, you go ahead, use your division rule, and you have that as being your final answer. A to the exponent C, B to the exponent 7C. That's it, guys, step by step. Example 16, our last example. Again, what would I do here? What if I had to block out everything else? I want you just to focus on this. Focus on this. If this was your question, what would you have done here? You would have multiplied out. Leave everything else out. Focus on this. If this was your question, you will multiply out. And likewise, if I have to multiply out, this becomes x to the exponent 2 times 4 is 4y, 2 times 3z is 6z. x to the exponent 3y minus 3z. Multiplication, I'm going to add. I have a question, or the next part is like this, the next step. And now, because it is division, I'm going to subtract, and your final answer, x to the exponent 3y plus 3z. Now, guys, this is a long section. It took two parts, part one and part two, to use or to show you all the rules. What I'm expecting you to do is to understand the rules first. Once you understand the rules, you are able to apply the rules. If you are struggling with the section or you are not getting full marks for the section, I'll advise you to start afresh. Start afresh, listen to all the rules, all the explanations, and you should be able to go and get the section correct. Remember guys, in the examinations, 7% is 7%. It could be the difference between passing and failing. Thank you guys. After this, your next section that you'll go over to is manipulation of technical formula, topic one.